thanks for running the van early so we can get air conditioning. <laughs> okay, so straight ahead is the flare station and uh, Montauk Renewables um, landfill gas to energy facility. So those are the uh, flare stacks that we saw on the, the aerial image um, to the left. Those are their combustion engines. They're all in a row there. And that collar stack on the left, that's their exhaust uh, gas from the engines. This is the uh, hazardous waste collection area. So any hazardous waste that we pull out of the trash goes there. Sure, I'll, I'll try. Thank you. Okay. Um, so right in front of us, this is one of our main um, landfill gas conveyance uh, pipelines right here. So that's a 24-inch HDPE pipe. And then if, if you remember from the liner sample, that white material, um, that's exposed liner right there. So that, that white material is called the scrim. That's the UV protective layer there. Um, so that's just a portion of exposed liner in an area where we have not yet filled waste. Mm -hmm. Christian, if I was here before the landfill started, the mountains over there are original. The mountains behind us are original. Yes. And in between was a big valley. Um, I'm not sure what the original topography was here, actually. And where are the birds? Are they out today? Oh, the, the raptors or the falcons? Right. So we, I did not mention that in the tour, but we do have a falconer who's on site occasionally. Um, we do get a lot of. Uh, like ravens and seagulls that will come in and the problem with that is they'll they'll come in they'll grab trash and then they'll fly over the neighborhoods and drop trash everywhere so he's not on site today but um, that is one of our bird abatement strategies is he just flies the falcons around and they just scare the birds off they you know they don't attack the birds or anything Seagulls know that they better stay away from these debris. They do. They definitely know. It, it's actually very effective. It's, it's really neat. He had said that before they had the falconers that were, or the, whatever those birds are called, that uh, there would be like 600 seagulls circling. Yeah. Huge so, flocks of seagulls. Huge flocks yeah. of And now you have about 26, maybe. It's yeah. unbelievable. Well, the crows aren't bothered by them, are they? Uh, the crows are a little more, a little more brave. Yeah, yeah, they're very brave. Yeah. One, one thing about the seagulls is they eat, a lot of them will eat plastic, and it gets stuck in their body, and they'll actually die from malnutrition because they can't, they're full of plastic. So it's actually better that they don't come here for them. And it's like 95% of the seagulls in the world have plastic in their stomach. Yeah. So do we. Before this was a proper landfill, was it just like a regular county dump? Um, no, so this, when this site was um, permitted, you know, there was a whole permitting process and the liner went in, so it was never, it was never just like a dump. Because the, you know, the thing they, with the seagulls was always a problem out here. It had an, an effect on the, the air base. On the, the rain is flying. Oh, then... right, right. That's a thick pipe. That's plastic. Yeah, that's the HCP pipe. So these are big uh, reclaimed water tanks right here, which we use to water the compost on the left. So this is our compost facility on our left-hand side. Um, we just finished building this about a year ago. We'll actually go in there. So the leaves and trees and stumps and stuff like that are ground up? Right. It all gets ground up and some of it comes here and we start the composting process. And I actually do have, if you guys want to take home some compost, I have some sample bags you can take for your garden. or. Thank you.
What are you doing to finish Commonwealth? Are you selling it or using it? So, we're not selling it yet. Um, they're, they're working on agreements with uh, local cities to just use it in you know, city landscaping projects. Um, but for now, you know, un until that is all set up, we're doing the compost giveaways where you can just come here and yeah, take as much compost as you want because right now we, we have nowhere to put it. <laughs> the last compost giveaway they had, they were going to give out like a couple, three bags to person and then they just ended up saying, no, just take as much as you can and here we yeah. scoop it. Here's the thing. So these are... These are very fresh piles, so you might see some trash in it, but we do have crews that come through and pick up all the trash, and I'll, I'll take you to the finished compost area, and we can take a look. There's nobody here. Are they all gone for the day? Um, yeah, well, we start to wrap up around 3, so they're probably... They're yeah, probably you start at like 5, don't you? Yeah. And then they don't have uh, set up for water here, do they? Unless the fire hydrant, I guess? For watering the um, piles? For watering the piles, we have a J stand over there. So the big tanks up top that we drove by, they feed down to this J stand and our, our water truck fills up there. And then we also have a stormwater basin in the corner also that when there's rain, we'll take that water and use it in the, the compost as well. How about the dust? I mean, I, I was confused as to what they use to get rid of the dust. Is it water or is it some kind of... Uh, residual from all this? Um, so, are you talking about compost or just the site no, in general? No, just the whole site. I mean, I right, so we do have a, a dust control program. That's also one of the things that the AQMD monitors. Um, it's called PM10, PM10, particulate matter, less than 10 microns. So, uh, we use, um, I mentioned the groundwater subdrains in the tour. We will take that groundwater and use it for dust control on site. So you might see some water trucks going around just spraying yeah, water. Um, we also use uh, reclaimed water for dust control as well. Reclaimed? Reclaimed water. Where? You get the reclaimed water? Uh, that's the from the facility? Irvine Ranch. Irvine Ranch Water District has a pipeline that comes up here. Oh, okay. yeah. It's basically water that when your sewer water gets processed exactly. and they come out with water that's usable. Sure, but not drinkable. Correct. So this is the this is some finished compost yeah. right here. So yeah, it once it goes through the whole process, you know, we pick out we pick out any residual uh, waste, any any plastics and stuff like that. And, you know, there there is still some that you might find in there, maybe little bits of plastic, but we do uh, have it tested, and it's. Uh, you know, good quality. I know they test it for like fecal bacteria and that sort of thing, and no issues there. You don't cover it. Nope. Okay, so we'll head on out of here. And we are expanding the facility. That's what this grading is right here. Is phase two of the of the greenery. We call it the greenery. We have no idea now what what the original green terrain was here. Or how much um, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you with, with any kind of accuracy. I can tell you that we are actually on trash right now. Um, I believe we're probably on maybe a hundred feet of trash right here beneath us. So that's years ago. Years ago, yep. That's what the, the birds were kind of an issue with the planes going so this uh, this was out of John Wayne. Even. This is the lined here. It is lined. Yeah. Actually, the edge of the liner goes th right through the middle of the of the greenery there. So half of it's on trash and half of it is not. Okay. So you throughout the site you'll see um, some of the wellheads for the uh, landfill gas. So these are either vertical or horizontal extraction wells. Vertical meaning they just go straight down. Um, perforations uh, near the bottom. That vacuum is applied to the well. It sucks up the gas and goes to the uh, flare station and the engines. The left, the left is finished. This is finished. This is final, final level here. Uh, probably it, later. Well, they might change their.
their minds. I'm not sure because the greenery, we were going to come and fill, you know, over the greenery and bring these grates up higher. Oh. But now that, you know, SB 1383 passed, that bill, we put the greenery in. I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to do with this area now. They, when did they stop burning trash? That I don't know. I think they still do in some places, probably not in California. straw waddles that it's just erosion control uh, measures. wind comes up or animals exactly yeah it's mostly so the coyotes don't get in and start dragging trash around or getting poisoned by eating some of the trash right is there a lot of fauna around this area they all kind of go away there's a lot actually yeah we've seen mountain lions here and coyotes deer Uh, well, they won't come out here during the day, but um, yeah, they're they're definitely around. So here's the trunk of the trash. Yep. So this is the this is the active area. This is where all the trucks come, um, dump the trash. And we have uh, bulldozers pushing the trash, and we also have compactors. So I heard. Heard you talking about the compactors. They have extremely heavy wheels made of metal, um, and they they just drive over the trash to compact everything. And um, the purpose of that is, you know, in, in landfilling, airspace is is money, right? So the the more compaction we can get, the more trash we can fit in any given area. So compaction is a big part of the. Uh, the landfilling process here. It also helps with stability too. Right. That so, too. So, so the guy in the vest here, in front of, in front of the Christian, is controlling the operation. He's not giving where to dump. This guy, so he's just directing the, um, these are the people that I mentioned, the contractors that have smaller right. uh, amounts of waste. So he is um, directing them to dump and then he's also inspecting their, their loads. 
to make sure that they don't have any uh, illegal materials that, that should not be dumped here. Where's our best pets? We're not going to get out of the tour van today, so I, I didn't bring it. My daughter wanted a Sorry. picture of me in a hard hat. I bet she did. Well, when we go back to the office, we can get you in one if you want. <laughs> you have like a screen that shows trash. Oh, a green <laughs> screen? Oh, you have to stand two feet deep in the trash. I know. <laughs> See, so they can tell. Um, they didn't, probably didn't hear about that. Yeah. So this is a this is the tarping machine right here. So we're getting pretty close to the closing operation. Um, he's gonna come in and, and he'll he'll lay down that tarp over the trash at the end of the day, and that just you know prevents prevents coyotes from coming in and also keeps the odors down. We, we do have a neighborhood about two miles away from here, so we, we do a lot to prevent any odors from traveling in that direction. Yeah, and, and if you had a Santa Ana wind, uh, I'm sure those neighbors two miles away would want it. Right, <laughs> right. And that's that's what these are right here. They're called wind, wind cages. Sc so when, when the winds pick up, we change the position of these wind cages here. It has, it has kind of like chicken wire throughout it, so it, it catches a lot of the, the trash that tries to fly away. Yeah, yeah, so they have these guys just directing them to the, the active area and that's that's the line um, for dumping. So that's that's a compactor right there that's coming across the slope. Um, you can see the tires how it has it's called a sheep's foot. It has those uh, kind of spikes on the tires. I'd say nubbies. Yeah, those nubs on the tires. So, um, why is he over there? I'm not sure. I think he's just working his way towards the active area. Um, do they actually, refuel with you know, gas here, or do they have to get it somewhere else? Uh, I think these are all these are all diesel. We do have a diesel fueling station down below. Yeah. Okay. I think he was up there actually because we were doing a split fill today, so we had two active areas. And I think he's just working his way back over here from the other one. But I think I can get you guys an even better view. We'll, we'll come around the back side. Is there one day that's busier than another? Not really, no. would say if something happens right then they'll say look see we know you, when you mess with the mob you end up in the landfill yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's a very real thing here actually it does happen uh, uh, have you found bodies here not since i've been here but every once in a while you know they'll they'll have a, a criminal under interrogation and he'll confess that they put the body in the trash and oh, I took the wrong road. Let me turn around. So then there's a whole investigation process where they'll actually come and excavate and, and try to find any trace of of the body, which is pretty hard to do because it gets buried so fast. Right now we're on top of trash. Yeah. yeah. I always look at stuff and see what can it be used as. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that definitely yes. still has We're use. So good. Um, Chino? 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 Chino?
actually right on the edge of the liner right here. Okay. So where's the edge of the liner? We're right on it. So the yard's been right in here. Is there going to be a landfill? It will be. Actually, this is the next phase that we're going to develop. It's called phase 8A. So this whole area, this whole valley right wow. here, um, will be filled uh -huh. with trash. Of course it will. But the, the, that, that's the, still yet to, the first step to put a liner down. Correct, yeah. So as they fill in this section, then they'll just start on that. Well, I thought we would get a little better view from over here, but we're not quite as close as I thought. Um, Actually, it's better than yeah, that's that's the compactor in action right there. Yeah. That's a lot of dust. That's a lot of dust. Sometimes you're probably worried of a flare of a fire or something. It definitely happens. Yeah. Yeah. Found a propane a propane tank in there at one point. Sure. Well, actually, you can get from um, dust. High surface area can have a flash. That's because I took welding classes, and that was a big deal. And I'm sure it applies to stuff here. Sure. Like literally, a bag of flour in the oh. right conditions could explode. Mm -hmm. uh, so the compact, the, the compactors are busy over here. What are all those other yellow vehicles? There's uh, like a dozen or so down there. They, are those all? Uh, down there, yeah, we have a couple compactors, um, okay. one of them is, there's a few bulldozers down there, there's a, a BG down there that we use to, like, blade the roads to make the roads smooth. We have a, are they all done for the day? Are they just... Um, they're not always all being used, oh, okay. so that's just kind of the staging area. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have an excavator down there that we use for for gas and different excavation projects. You must have a whole big department just the, the mechanics of keeping the machinery going. We do, yeah. It's we, an industry of its own. Right. We have a contract with Quinn, uh, with, with Caterpillar, mm -hmm. so they have a crew here that's on yeah. site. Because yeah. um, as you can imagine, it, it's a lot of wear and tear on these machines, you know, yeah. being in the and trash. it's very specific because it's a skill set to be able to compactors down. I'd be somebody right away. Right. Call AAA. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, yeah. and downtime on the machines. Yeah, is money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that big heavy set guy? Does he still work here? Uh, we've got a few of them. We'll narrow that down. <laughs> yeah. He was on the film. He was on the film. And he's a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one, I mean, he's the one that knew everything about everything. You know, there's always one guy that knows everything. And he was the one on the film. That's not true. That's terrible. <laughs> he was huge. The way the system works, Chris, is one of those guys in a yellow vest tell, tells them where to dump the trash, and then these compact the guys just kind of randomly move around and back it down to the status like we I'm or sure there's a pattern. It's not entirely random. Um, towards the end of the day, it, it gets a little more, a uh, little more freestyle, I guess. But during the day, and if we had a better perspective, you'll see them. They'll they'll move together and push together and compact together. Um, and the equipment, they all have an interface in there that it'll show them because we want minimum three passes with the compactor over any given area. Okay. So it'll it'll show them. Okay, you've covered this area once, twice, three times. This area is good. Okay. Yeah. So it's not entirely random. But the operation is manual. It is. Yeah. Outside of the guidance from the computer system, it's completely manual. I don't see any porta potties or any snack, snack trucks. I saw one. There was a snack truck the other day. Oh, yeah. did, was there a snack truck? The, the, snack truck, truck or something? the snack truck leaves at one. So <laughs> next time, just come before one if you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they do have very good tacos. And so the, the, do they just, everybody stops at same time? Like, no. Oh. I don't think so. They didn't, they didn't, there were still people working and so they probably taking turns. Wow. They don't want to stop completely because then all trucks coming in would have difficulty unloading. Good point, exactly. Yeah. That's the logistics of it. 
by the third tour, tour I'm going to be an expert on this place. Yeah, <laughs> you're getting there. You can give the tour yourself. Yeah. Hey, Frank, uh, we don't have anybody to do your tour. Uh, can you do it for us? Yeah, here's the keys. <laughs> Here, we contacted the nonprofit. We got your report from the DMV, so we didn't have to do that. <laughs> mud right here, so I'm actually going to turn around. I don't want us to get stuck. Yeah, we don't know how uh, thick that is. Yeah. We can all push. So uh, when we develop a new phase, we keep track of, of that impacted acreage and we're obligated to do uh, an exchange. Kind of, yeah, an exchange, right. It's, it's remediation efforts somewhere else. Like, yeah, the, the lines that so are that's, that's natural topography, and so she decided they didn't want to fall into the village. Well, yeah, so this, it has been graded. This is actually an active landslide to our left. Um, okay. They graded it to help stabilize that landslide. Um, and then those straw wattles are just laid down to prevent erosion. Right, yeah. yeah. It's an active landslide. It's moving very slowly. Um, what does that mean, active landslide? That if, it, if we had a sudden rain, it could, it could do if, a landslide. If, if we drove back there, you'll actually see cracks forming in the ground. Uh -huh. And that's just, this hillside is just moving. That's what it sounded like. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's very slow, but it is happening. Um, so we have, they're called inclinometers that we use to measure the movement so of that landslide. So you're trying to make it not move as fast as it wants to? Right, no. exactly. Space open and full of trash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so what's funny is when a landslide happens, you also have to deal with cleaning it up, but also probably the environmental stuff. Somebody has to do another assessment. Usually, uh, do they? Probably, you know, I... That whole remediation effort, remediation yeah. of the landslide, that was before I was here, so I'm really not too familiar. When I first saw those, I thought they were um, things to filter gravel and stuff, because oh, that's what no. they'll do. Yeah, they'll have a slide with right. various widths in the port. Like or something. Yeah, I didn't know what the word was for that. Is that sluice? Sort of strange. They have a fence there. What do you Which do when it rains? The brick fence. You trash, you have oh, set. there's a V ditch right there. So oh. that's oh, okay to protect it. Sure. What happens when it rains? When it's really, it's really Water hard. falls down. Yeah. So we we do. I can actually take you. I'll go this way, and we'll go by. It's called our wet weather area. So we do stay open when it rains. Um, and what we do is we take in asphalt from any kind of road construction project they rip up all the old asphalt and we take it for free I think I could be wrong on that one but we do take it right and we grind it up create asphalt grindings and create what's called the wet deck so obviously here where it's all dirt um, you know the trucks wouldn't be able to drive through the mud so when it rains, we operate on the wet deck, which is a smaller area, but um, the asphalt grinding, so the water just goes through it. It doesn't get muddy, so the trucks can, can still drive on it. How far are we from the asphalt plant? Uh, All-American asphalt is like just on the other side of that hill there. That's, uh, that's yeah. just in the paper. They want to close it down.
believe we do take some waste from LA County also, but the majority of our haulers come from Orange County. It just depends on the, the contract. What are all those holes in the ground? The holes are yeah. like right here? Yeah, yeah. That's just from the compactor wheels okay. passing over. Oh. So let me take you guys over here. And you can see that he wheel holes here. Yeah, that was that one that just passed by us earlier. it. Um, when 
we're coming down this hill, you'll see one of our stormwater basins on the left-hand side. So any water that touches the landfill, we, we collect all of it in our stormwater basins. You're going to see it. It's full of dirt right now that we're removing. Um, so we collect all of it in the stormwater basins, and then we, we test that water, make sure it's okay to discharge, and... Uh, then, then we discharge it, goes to the storm drains. Yeah, I noticed the drain over there was sort of full. Yeah, we're preparing for uh, the winter season still. It's pretty rough around here in the, in the winter time. Where uh, does Well, we collect all of the runoff yeah. then... uh, into our basins, which I thought you would get a better view, but it, one of them is down there. We have three big basins on site. Um, we test the water. Make sure that there's no contamination in the water, and then we discharge it. So it just goes to the storm storm drains. Yeah, just the city storm drains. I would guess the native might have been more clayish. Since I'm, well, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I, I'm just guessing that it's probably more native clayish. And then, are they they are they bringing in soil, sand from other areas and dirt? Uh, we do take dirt. Most of it goes to the Brea site. Uh, we we say they're dirt poor because uh -huh. they they need more dirt to cover their operation. Um, whereas us, we have plenty of dirt from our excavation projects and phase expansions, so uh, the haulers are allowed to take dirt here, but we try to direct them to the other sites. Mm. Not that they want to drive there with the extra gas money. Yeah. Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Um, thank you. If you want to come back inside, use the restroom, whatever. I also have some uh, bags of compost that you guys can take. Um, that's that's in the conference room uh, where we were. And that bucket that you said that you might have some. Yeah, I'll bring those over. Please. I love that. Lovely party goose. I've been using, yes, I've been using a Tupperware box that works okay, but it's not.